My question is, following the recent announcement by government on increasing funds for mental health services, how will you ensure less decision people reign a priority in your agenda? Mental health, how do young people remain a priority? Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm more from the, uh, the southwest of the county than, than Leicester itself. But, um, I mean, what I would say is that I think um, support for people with mental health issues has been a big priority for this government and has certainly been a big priority for um, Lib Dem ministers in this government, for Paul Burstow and now for Norman Lamb. Um, and, you know, I very much... Um, welcome the announcement that was made at my party's spring conference, which I was at uh, up in Liverpool last yeah. weekend, um, of an extra one point, and then confirmed in the budget, um, of an extra 1.25 billion pounds going into um, child and adolescent uh, mental health services um, over the, the next uh, period. So, I mean, I think certainly nationally, and obviously that will have an impact on, on Leicester and Leicestershire as well, um, we are making that investment but, it, but it's also perfectly true and you'd be right to come back to me and saying that overall in terms of um, overall mental health funding it, it has gone down <coughs> over, over, over the past five years so as always always the case with the government you know they they have successive governments they give it in one hand and, and they take away um, in the other but I think it's so important you, you know so many of us if you look at the figures will have throughout our lives some kind of mental health issue um, and obviously we need support um, as and when that occurs. But I certainly think in terms of children and, mental, children and adolescent mental health services, this new funding uh, that Nick Clegg announced will be of great benefit. <coughs> the, I'll answer a more general question. Uh, for, so I'll answer a more general background. I, I've, sort of, um, was a, I've been trained as an army medic and uh, there's a saying that we got taught, you know, you do the most for the most. And I think we've got a we've got a pot of money. I've talked about the debt earlier that this country's in. We've got a pot of money we can spend on the NHS, and our job is to make it as politicians is try and make it go as far as it can. We do as much as it can for the most people it can. In terms of, I'm not going to sit here and say that one section of society should be uh, prioritised ahead of others. I think their medical decisions should be taken by doctors. What I will say is things like PFI and various sort of financial scams like that. Uh, are a net sort of cost to the country and they're a net cost to the NHS. Do I think the NHS could be more efficient? Yes. Could it do more for more people? Probably. Uh, but I think things like PFI are just financial scams. Uh, and and I, I wouldn't really like to answer that question too specifically because I think medicine should be treated given on the basis of need. Um, I think, to be fair, I think everyone would agree we need to put more money into it. In general, I think we do equally need to to give mental health a bigger a bigger chunk of money. But I think one thing that we particularly championing is is actually drug use and drug abuse because there is a, a fairly high correlation between those that take drugs and then end up having mental health issues later on in life. And so the kind of the whole oh you're taking drugs we're going to just stick you in a prison cell doesn't really help. If we actually got people off the drugs in the first place, mental health issues would would go down. I do agree with a UK colleague that things like the PFI contracts, they're an absolute nightmare. But then again, so are things like the Labour Party spending £10 billion on the computer system, that never had to happen. All these sort of things, they're quite right, yes, as politicians, we are both, we are, we are morally and I guess technically in some respects legally responsible for making sure that we spend your taxpayers' money the best we can, but sometimes these what I would say almost call farcical experiments, they don't help anyone and they end up taking money away from the people who, who actually desperately need it. I would very much welcome this funding because mental health has gone way under the radar for a very long time. And it's not only mental health of young people. I'm afraid as you grow older, <laughs> dementia and other diseases hit the other end of life as well. Um, I think for mental health, I think we're all in communities, we all have networks and we can support and spot people in need, but currently, certainly as a, as a city <coughs> council, the priorities of this council have missed people in need. The mayor missed the 
children's services, may have included young people with mental health, maybe had a social worker that was then removed. He's now suddenly become really interested in young people's services. But I think that as a message to young people and the people of this city is a mayor that doesn't take note of what is something that, I'm going to use this word, isn't sexy. But he can do his big projects and get attention, but he missed completely. Why? How can a leader, he's, the, he's the, basically the chief executive, so I've moved off a little bit. Mental health, it is critical that, we, that the society is measured by how it cares for the most vulnerable. Can I just broaden this a bit? Picking up from the sense rather than the specifics of the question, and how do we make sure that Leicester's young people's needs remain a priority on the agenda? And perhaps I'm the one person here who is able to say this, as I'm probably older than all of you, and I'm actually in receipt of a state pension, a final salary scheme pension, a bus pass, a winter fuel allowance, why is it that I, as an older voter, get all these things and that my, I have been protected, largely, from the effects of the cuts? And I would say probably at the expense of money which should, more rightly, go to meet young people's needs. Can you comment on that, Olivia? Yeah, can I go first? Sorry, yeah. I didn't get to speak about the mental oh, health thing. And I, um, I was just going to say that it was the Labour Party um, that introduced the NHS. It's, it's thanks to the Labour Party that we have an NHS now. And we would be, we're obviously proud to support it, and we are proud to keep, and we, we don't like this backdoor T-tip that is going to privatise the uh, NHS without Just even knowing. NHS. Just even, uh, uh, the Lib Dems, unfortunately, have gone to coalition with them, so they're obviously going to support them. But we have always been a champion of the NHS for the most vulnerable. We want things for the most vulnerable because they're the most in need. It's not about making a pot of money go around for everybody. Because if I don't need it, then why are you trying to spread it to me when this person needs my share? We want to make sure that people that need the most get the most. And if the pe people that obviously need mental health services, they need them. And we don't need to make that spread widely. We need to make it spread enough to meet the need. But in terms of what your point, sorry to expand, yeah, sorry. <laughs> that's fine. And um, the reason I, th oh, well, the reason I believe, and I, I, this is my, I'll be voting for the first time in May. I've never voted in the general election before, so this will be my first go at doing it. And I think the reason that uh, young people have had all their budget slashes, can we just don't vote? It's really easy to protect the grey vote because they'll re wheel out on May the seventh and they'll vote because they always do because they're old. Um, <laughs> and that, that's not, that's not meant to be disrespectful, but that is what they probably will do. Is they, they, will, they will, they will, vote. And I think because we we don't tend to vote, where our turnout's really low. If I was, uh, if I was a. Uh, a leader of a party, I'll be thinking, well, where am I going to get my votes from? And it won't be for people that are my age. You, you put loads of policies for the people that you know are definitely going to vote, and they are the sort of middle-aged bracket, and that's just reality. Thank you. Not to call you all old. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I just wanted to say, first of all, just on a factual point, that um, certainly the person who came up with the idea for the NHS was William Beveridge, and he was a liberal. So just just to just to make uh, that factual uh, that factual point. Um, I think you're entirely right in what you say that, and of course we all want to see um, senior citizens looked after. I mean, you know, no one doesn't want to see them. But I think, you know, successive governments have done exactly what a Labour friend here says, which is that they decided that older folks go out and vote, they want those votes, and so they'll make sure that all the little freebies, all the little nice things, all the little extras um, are protected whilst constantly kicking your generation. And I mean, I must admit, I'm, I, I'm amazed that, you know, you guys of your age, you know, on, on the streets kind of protesting about this. I mean, I, I would say this about, because although I am an Dem and support some things in this government, I'm very much on the left in my party and have opposed a great deal of what my party's done in coalition. I'm perfectly uh, frank and honest about that. And I think one of the things they have done as a government, so that my party's MPs must be included in the blame for it, is they constantly kicked younger generations. They, they, they've taken away a whole load of um, benefits and other things that, that, that you guys have. Um, and, you know, I, I think you guys should be more angry than you apparently are uh, about it. But the way to deal with it um, is to have a peaceful... Res uh, river. I can't speak today. 
revolution. Um, and go out there and vote. Go out there and vote in May and make your voice heard. Only when there is a strong um, youth voting bloc will government ministers of successive parties really take your age group seriously. Until, until they do that, they won't. Yeah, I'd agree with all, all of the people. I mean, that, that's the people who've been before me. That generally is the reason why I sort of think younger generations do get shafted. Uh, I actually think it goes even deeper than the, the bit we've discussed when you look at the sort of monetary policy the central banks have done. You know, it's all been to bail out sort of asset holders. The people who own shares and generally own houses outright tend to be older. So they've done well on that basis. In terms of incomes, over the last five years, 2008 to about 2014, the average working age household income went from 37,900 a year to 33,500, I think, 500. And that was a nominal drop. So you add on inflation as well. Working age households suffered because their incomes aren't RPI linked. A lot of older people, pensioners, whatever, their incomes are RPI linked, so they're protected from the effects of inflation. Uh, and that's another kick in the teeth for younger people. On top of all the debts you're going to be paying, we're going to be paying as well over the next 20, 30 years. Uh, not a great position to be in. Um, yeah, I kind of, to be fair, I kind of agree with the Lipton colleague in that you. The reason that most kids, or I say kids, youth, young adults, um, don't get listened to is because you don't go out and vote. I think you really need to. I mean, a, a really good example is in Iceland in the 1940s, 90% of the women in that country um, actually went on strike, and within five years they had their first woman MP, uh, woman prime minister. So those sort of getting out there and showing we're not going to, we're not going to handle all this rubbish, and, and we want our voices to be heard. We want to. To get more stuff for ourselves. I mean, for example, I don't actually think that any student who goes to university should even have to pay tuition fees. For example, I mean, Labour initially started off with three thousand, and we know that the Tory Lib Dem coalition have been made it to nine thousand. I think those sort of things you just need to stand up and say we're not going to have enough. And unfortunately, the only way at the moment you can kind of do it is just to go out and vote. The more of you are, the more you'll be heard. Um, I would agree with most of the things that's been said about the disparity because one portion of the population tends to vote against another. But I want to give you a little story of maybe how important a vote is. I lived in South Africa between 97 and 98. I visited South Africa in 1989. Apartheid separated people on the basis of colour and denied 80% of that population the vote. It was thoroughly evil. And when they voted in 1994, there was queues of them queuing round the block to vote. <coughs> they knew how valuable it was to vote. If you could get a little essence of that value to vote from this room, through your social networks, you could change things. And when you hear someone say it's the reality, change the reality. But I'm afraid um, all the teachers up here telling you what to do doesn't really help much. But if you can change that, as they did in South Africa, you can change it. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Um, I just want to say uh, that in the next day, yeah, I can't remember your name. Sorry. You, you said that you were yeah, you said uh -huh. that you were focused on uh, mental health for child and adolescents. But that's only up until 16, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure. But what, what about that age after that? Because I think that's when you're most in, most people are most at need because they don't have, yeah, you. Yeah, sorry, I thought I was thinking, don't shut up So I wanted that. to know yeah. what you're going to do for, for the young people rather than the child and adolescents because it's like you've missed out an age gap. And I think and it, that was when it most affected me and when I was basically treated the worst way, and I'm not going to explain now, but you kind of missed out the age gap that I was and I don't want that to happen to other people so I wanted to know what you're going to do for those young people 
as well as the child and adolescents, because that's not in the age gap. Right. Well, well, again, I mean, I mean, something. You know, I'm, 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 I'm not the health minister, um, and uh, mental health isn't my particular area of expertise. But all I would say is that there should be funding across the piece in terms of um, uh, age groups, um, and you know, it, it, it has been wrong that we've seen um, overall funding got for, for for mental health over the past five years of this uh, government. Um, and I think whoever is in power, whatever kind of coalition or otherwise we have post men, um, then governments need to make sure that mental health is, is funded across the age range. 